Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video, I'm going to be filming my review and three looks on the Burgundy Collection from Colourpop Cosmetics. This is their 2019 fall collection. However, I do not have everything in this collection. I just picked up the palette, a couple of the blushes, a couple of the glosses, and I got the eyeliners and mascara. So I just got a little bit of everything from each category in this collection. So hopefully that's okay with you guys. But in today's video, I'll be sharing my thoughts on each product, which ones would I recommend to you, as well as giving you guys some swatches, some comparisons, and then of course at the end of the video you will see my three looks using the palette. So if you guys are interested in all of that, continue watching. It's gonna be a long one, so grab a snack. So just jumping straight into my review, let's just start off with the eyeshadow palette because that's always the most exciting thing in a collection. Well, to me, it's always the most exciting thing. I just love eyeshadows. So this is the Whatever 12 Pan Burgundy Eyeshadow Palette. This is 18 US dollars. You will receive seven mattes, three metallics, one super shock shadow, and one pressed glitter. So technically, you get every single formula that Colourpop has to offer in an eyeshadow form in this palette. It's been a while since we have gotten the 12 pan from Colourpop, am I right? I feel like we just gotten so many 9 pans recently. And don't get me wrong, I love the 9 pans, but the 12 pans are just the original, you know? And you can't go wrong with a good solid 12 shadows. I honestly feel like a broken record sometimes when I tell you guys what I look for in a palette, but I gotta realize there are new people here and I gotta tell everybody new what I look for in a palette. And again, this is just my personal preference and what I look for and the looks that I like to create. So in this palette, you get a highlighting shade, which is just necessary. Sometimes palettes don't even give you a highlighting shade to highlight your inner corners or brow bone, which is really not a make or break deal because you can always use your highlighter, but it is just nice to have it in the palette so you just have everything in one place. So you get a highlighting shade, which is the Super Shock formula. You get a bunch of transition shadows. You get your medium tones and also your darker tones. So if you wanted to create a very soft, subtle natural look just pop in one of these transition shadows as a one-off color put some mascara on you're good to go if you want to bump it up a little bit use these medium tones if you want to make it very dramatic to the clubs take these darker mattes and you can take it there you can take it to this very grungy dramatic look that I have on now or you can create something very subtle and you also have some beautiful metallics to pair with that as well as a press glitter everything that I want from finishes to range from light to dark it has it in this palette and the tones in here are just so full. It's just so cozy. This palette just honestly screams full to me. You get burgundy shades but you also get some really good chocolate browns. So you get a bit of both. You can create something that's a little bit more burgundy and more red or you can create something a little bit more neutral, more warm tone. So you have a bit of both. You can mix and match. I think all around the range in here, the selection of shades is just perfect. So me personally, I love everything in here. I honestly don't have anything bad to say. If anything, I would probably have swapped out one of these metallic shadows for like a rich gold. I love gold and burgundy together. It's just a very beautiful color combination. But that's like my only complaint. Other than that, this is a really great solid palette. I also want to highlight that these darker shadows at the bottom are so beautiful. Sometimes with darker shadows, they can be a little bit patchy, especially when it's a plum shade. They can be patchy, they can skip a little, but these darker shadows just worked like a dream. I had no issues with that. It was just so easy to work with. I think it's like the perfect fall palette. I don't think I have loved a palette so much in a long time from Colourpop. I think the last palette that I really liked was probably the Sweet Talk palette and that was a while ago. I think when I reviewed that palette I had bangs and Clearly now my bangs are all grown out. If anything, there is a lot of kickback with some of the mattes, but to me, fallout is not really a big deal. Like you just tap your brush off and the problem is solved. And also there is a pressed glitter when you are using glitter around your eyes, whether it is eye safe or not eye safe, just be careful. Now moving on to the next category, we have the Ultra Glossy Lips. They actually came out with six of these with this collection and I only picked up two. I picked up these shades Space Maker and Crushin. These are seven US dollars each and they are in the High Shine formula. So Colourpop has two Ultra Glossy Lip formulas. They have this one, the High Shine formula, where it has the delicious scent as well as 
the brush tip. And for the other formula of the gloss, it comes in the Dofo applicator. If you guys know the Aquarius gloss, that is the other formula. So these all are in the high shine and I picked up these two shades because aren't these just my kind of shades? I really do enjoy the high shine formula and I feel like these are a little bit different from the high shine because typically, well, what I have seen and what I have in my collection, a lot of the high shine glosses, a lot of them are like lip gloss toppers where they're like a clear base with a lot of glitter in it. But these don't have any glitter. These are an opaque gloss, which I love. You know, there's a time and place for a glitter gloss and an opaque gloss. I feel like they're very muted tones, very pigmented. Out of the two that I picked up, I like Crushin more because with Space Maker, the more nudie one, because it is a lighter shade, you definitely can see the brush strokes on it. These both are beautiful shades and I like them both. I can see myself using them both very, very often. But out of the two, I personally would recommend Crushin. I don't know if it's just the name that I like a lot as well because there is a Korean R&B singer called Crush and like I'm obsessed with him like I love him and you know the name says Crush and I'm just like mm, a little bit more biased to the lip gloss but I really do like the shade and the formula so yeah the glosses I think it really matches with this theme both of the glosses paired very nicely with the eye looks you could even pair these glosses with the eye look that I'm wearing right now I also picked up two of these super shock blushes they also released six of these in this collection these are eight US dollars each so I just wanted to like mention before we get into the three looks that for this super shock shock cheek. I did use this one as my bronzer for all three looks and this is considered as a blush but I did use it as my bronzer and I think it worked out pretty nicely. I mean there are no rules to makeup so I did what I did. This one here is called Too Cool For School and again I used it for my bronzer. You definitely could use it as a blush if you wanted to if you had a deeper complexion maybe this would work better as a blush but I've never used a super shock bronzer before so it was the first time for me and then I also got this blush shade in She's In Bold and I really like this as well. It's a very pretty warm pink shade. I really enjoyed these both. For more of like a natural look using super shock blushes are perfect because it looks very natural but it's still gives you that pigment. I'm probably gonna play with these a lot more. Alright, now moving on to the last category. It is the little eye bundle. So you can get the BFF mascara called a wine o'clock as well as the creme gel liner and the creme pot gel liner in the shade Joyride. These three you can get for 18 US dollars. So let's talk about the pot gel liner first. I've only used one of the pots before and it was the black one and I did not like it and ever since using that I haven't used any other liners because I just thought the formula was bad. But using this one it's actually quite different. This one was actually a lot more creamy and a lot easier easier to use. I actually found it to be very smooth. There's a little bit of inconsistency with the creme gel liners as well. Some are good, some are bad, so I would assume for the pot liners it's kind of the same thing. So this one is probably more on the better side. I found it very easy and smooth to work with. But for the shade, I personally don't know how often I would wear it. I feel like if it was a bit darker, maybe for me it would have been a lot more wearable. As well as the creme gel liner, I actually really like this. It goes really nicely into the waterline. Super smooth and pigmented. And lastly, we have the mascara. My one was a little bit dried out when it came. It's not as gooey as the other mascaras that I have. Like I use the brown one every time I go to work and that one's a little bit more goopy than this one. I think this one's a little bit dried out but I do like the shade of it. I just think on me colored mascaras is just kind of pointless because I have very very short sparse lashes that you can't even see the color. I need to use this when I wear more of a natural look because when I was creating all of these looks and I try to use this mascara it was just pointless because all the looks were so dramatic and glam that you couldn't even see this mascara. So now that I've given you guys my thoughts on each product, I want to recommend you my top top picks out of this collection from what I picked up. So obviously I would highly recommend the eyeshadow palette all around, an amazing palette. The range, the formula, just beautiful tones. I am a big big fan of the palette. And then the other thing I would recommend is the BFF creme gel liner in the shade Joyride. I think a burgundy eyeliner just works well with a lot of looks whether you're using this palette or a different palette. Looks amazing. With brown eyes and just like a burgundy in the waterline looks amazing. Everything else in the collection I do like. Like I do like the glosses but they're not my holy grail glosses if you know what I mean. The blushes are pretty but I do have other super shock blushes that I prefer more. So yeah that was my recommendation. We can now move on to my swatches, the comparisons and then my three looks.
So to get started with the first look, I'm going to be taking the shade Maybe Later and this is going to be my transition shadow. I'm just going to put that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions like always. I am going to blend this up towards my brow bone because I do want the shadow to peek through underneath all of the darker shadows that we're going to place on top later. I'm also going to take this onto my lower lash line as well, just sweeping that from the outer corner right to the inner corner. But remembering at the outer corner, you are connecting the top and bottom shadows together at that point. Now I am taking the shade Bad Guy and I'm going to start packing that on to my lid space. I'm going to pack on the color there first just to get the pigment and then I will start doing my blending work around the crease area once the shadow has been packed on. You're going to slowly start seeing a gradient effect from light to dark and again I'm also taking this on to my lower lash line as well but I'm using more of like a smaller definer brush to really pack that on my lower lash line. Then I am going to take Miss Bright Side and I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing that we did previously with Bad Guy but we are using a smaller brush and we're going to focus it a little bit closer to the lash line. Since this is the darkest shadow, we are just mainly focusing this on the lid space and towards the lash line. We're not going to blend it up too high towards the crease area. Same thing on the lower lash line. I'm using a very thin definer brush to really press this up against my bottom waterline. This shadow is just the icing on the top because it's so dark and smoky and it's not patchy at all. And now I am taking the shade TTYN and I'm going to use this to highlight my inner corners. I did think this was a little bit too dark to highlight my inner corners. So I did take a bit of Tati and just put that on top to kind of lighten it and brighten it up a little bit. And now quickly I am just taking my Inglot AMC 77 gel liner to create my wing. I think for a dramatic smoky eye, a wing liner is just necessary. I'm also taking the Colourpop BFF Creme Gel Liner in the shade Joyride and I'm going to use this to tightline my entire bottom waterline. And for my lashes today, I will be wearing the Colourpop Falsies in the style Mami. I think for a dramatic smoky eye, we need a dramatic pair of lashes. And these lashes are super full, dramatic and long. So it is just perfect for this look. Moving on to the face, I am using the Super Shock Cheek in the shade Too Cool for School and I'm going to use this as my bronzer and for my blush, I'll be taking another Super Shock Cheek in the shade She's in Bold and I'm going to use this for my blush. These two are part of the Burgundy collection so I wanted to use it with this look but I did take another Super Shock Cheek in the shade Lunch Money to use as my highlight. This is not part of the collection but I thought I would just do a whole super shock moment on my cheeks. And this guys is the first look completed. I hope you guys enjoyed it. For my lip pairing, I decided to go with the ultra glossy lip in the shade Crushin. Doing this very dark, sultry, glam, smoky eye just feeds my soul. Like I am so happy with how this turned out and I just love a classic smoky eye, you know? So I hope you guys like it as well. Getting started with the second look, I'm going to be taking the shade Pink Slip and this is going to be our transition shadow. I'm going to put that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions, blending that up towards my brow bone. I'm also going to take this on to my lower lash line as well, just sweeping that from the outer corner right to the inner corner. Next, I am taking the shade Pass It On and I'm going to use this right at the outer third of my eyes to really deepen up the look. We are going for more of a cat eye shape, so placing any darker shadows at the outer third is going to help create that eye shape. I'm just going to first pack on the shade there and just really build up that color and then I will use circular motions to further blend. 
And now I am taking the shade in bold and I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing but this time I am using a smaller brush and I am working it really close to my lash line. I'm not dragging this one out too much. I don't want it to overtake the other shadows that we just placed down. You do again want to see that gradient effect from light to darkness and I'm also going to take this onto my lower lash line as well just pressing this up against my waterline by using like a flat definer brush. Now I am using the shade Dichin U and I'm going to be using this shadow wet. I'm going to place that right at the inner third of my lid space where we didn't place any of those darker shadows. This is going to help contrast those darker shadows and really accentuate the cat eye shape that we are going for. This shadow has a lot of glitter sparkles to it so it really catches the light very beautifully. I think if you were to wear this out at night time this would look so mesmerizing. I'm then going to take the shade Tardy and this is going into the inner corners of my eyes to highlight that area. Again, has a lot of little silver glitter reflex so I think it ties in with the Chin Yu perfectly. I'm also going to take this onto my brow bone as well just to highlight that area. Now I am taking my Colourpop BFF liquid liner in the shade Grande and I'm going to be using this today to give my wing just because everything is super warm and brown toned that I thought a brown liner would be more suitable for this look. I then took my Artisy In Modestar Eyeliner in the shade Coffee and I used this to tightline my upper waterline as well as my bottom waterline. Moving back onto the face, we are using the same products as yesterday. So for my bronzer, I'm using the Super Shock Cheek in the shade Too Cool for School. And for my blush, I am using the Super Shock Cheek in the shade She's In Bold, as well as the Super Shock Cheek in the shade Lunch Money for my highlighter. And this is the second look completed. I hope you guys like this one. For this look, I decided to go with the ultra glossy lip in the shade Space Maker. I think for a neutral eye, a nude lip is just perfect. It's a very simple, easy technique to create. Definitely a technique and shades that I would use on the daily if I was going to grab this palette. Now we are on to the final look and I will be starting off with the shade Copycat. This is going to be my transition shadow. I'm going to put that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions. I am going to blend this high up towards like my brow bone. Because we are doing a cut crease in this look, we do need this shadow to peek through. Don't be afraid to take it up high. Um, it's going to be the base for this whole look. You can see that I'm also dragging it out towards the outer corners of my eyes as well to really create that cat eye shape. Now I am going into the shade Bad Guy and I'm gonna pretty much just pack this onto my lid and then I'll blend it up towards my transition shadow around the crease area. It's similar to the first look because we just need the shadow to be everywhere pretty much. Next I am taking Miss Bright Side and I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm just packing this onto my lids, blending that up towards my transition. When you put on a darker color, it does take away from the previous color. So I am just literally going back and forth with my brushes with the lighter shades just to build that product up, blend some more build it up again and blend again. So it's just like a work in progress. It does look very similar to the first look, but once we cut the crease, it's going to change completely to a different look. So now I'm taking my P. Louise eyeshadow base and I'm going to be using this to cut my crease out. Since this is a halo cut crease, we are just placing the base right at the center of our lid. And then we're going to take that up towards our crease area and I'm going to take like a thinner paintbrush to really carve out that crease. The curve of the cut crease is just following the natural curve of my eye. I am now taking the shade Not Okay and I'm going to put that right on top of that P. Louise base that we just placed on. I am going to use a very small brush because around the cut crease area you want to make sure you are just going right underneath that. You don't want to go above it or it's going to defeat the whole purpose of this cut crease.
And now taking the shade Duh, which is the press glitter, I am putting that right on top of Not Okay. It's just going to add a lot more dimension and more sparkle, and it's also going to lighten up the eyes as well. Now I'm taking the pot gel liner in the shade Joyride and I'm going to use this to line my lash line. It's just going to add some definition around that lash line ready for my falsies. I'm going back into the shade Bad Guy and I'm going to run this all over my bottom lash line right from the outer corner to the inner corner and just making it this very grungy, very smoky. You can see at the outer corner I am trying my best to connect those shadows that way the whole eye look can come as one and doesn't look like two separate things. Once again, going back into the shade Miss Brightside, I'm going to press this up against my waterline just to balance the eyes out because I don't want the eyes to be too top heavy. And then I am taking Tati to highlight my inner corners and also a little bit on my brow bone as well. To complete the eye look, I just took the ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Joyride and I used that to tight line my entire bottom waterline. I also took the BFF Mascara in the shade Wine O'Clock and I used that on my bottom lashes. Honestly, you can't see it because the lash line is very dark and I don't have a lot of lashes to begin with, but just know I did use it for my bottom lashes. And just like the other two looks, for my cheek area, I used the Super Shock Cheek in the shade Too Cool For School. The other Super Shock Cheek in the shade She's Bold as my blush and Super Shock Cheek Lunch Money as my highlighter. Alright guys, so this is the final look completed. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is just the ultimate burgundy, fall, smoky, grungy look. I love the super glam eyes, the halo cut crease with this dark lip and then my burgundy jumper. I mean, this is just me. I feel so good in this makeup. So I hope you guys enjoyed this final look. Alright guys, this is going to complete today's review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up for me. I would appreciate it so much if you did. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think of this burgundy collection. What are your favorites? Were there any other like glosses or the blushes that I didn't pick up that you think I would love? Let me know down below in the comments. I love hearing your feedback. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!